Hey guys, Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools, aka BOAT. Thanks for joining me. And today we're going to be painting a front door. Now, I feel like the front door is actually an important aspect of the home just because of the fact that it's one of the very first things people see. And might as well make a good first impression, right? And if you haven't noticed already, we're painting it red. Red room. Let's get started. This paint project obviously starts with paint and something to open it with. Latex additive, some type of container, protective mask, painter's tape with this clean. TSP cleaner, a bucket, a sponge, and a towel. A drill with Phillips head drill bit and an extension. A spray gun. And one of these little guys. I'll explain more about this guy later. When using a spray gun, it's all about the consistency of your paint, which is why we are using a paint additive. First off, we're going to be stirring up this paint, making sure that it is fully mixed together. For this project, I'm using a bare exterior satin enamel paint that is a paint and primer in one. It's actually quite a thick paint to begin with, which is just another reason why we're putting an additive in there. I purchased this Sunnyside paint additive at Sherwood Williams, and you can tell right away that this product does work quite well because of the fact that it thins it out very rapidly with a small amount. Now, the one thing you don't want to do at this point is put too much of this additive in, because if you do, then it's going to be too thin, and you can't come back from too thin. You can come back from too thick, just not too thin. Now, I told you we'd come back to this little dipstick. This actually comes with the sprayer that I purchased, and it actually calculates how thin the paint that you're using should be before you put it into the sprayer, because if you put it in too thick, it's never going to spray properly. And as you can see, I had to use quite a bit of the additive because of the fact that this has to be a thin mixture for this type of sprayer. But once you get it right, good to go. Tip of the week! Does this ever happen to you when you're painting all day, having a big old glob of paint on the rim? Well, just take a nail and a hammer. Boom. Hit a few holes, and you will be able to see the nice drainage right then and there. Look at it. Boom. Done. From there, just seal it up, and you're good to go. Now that we have our paint mixture taken care of, we are ready to remove this door. And uh, one of the easiest ways I find to do this is to just put something underneath the door so it has something to brace against, and then go ahead and just take off the hinges that are uh, connected to the door. I'm leaving one at the top there at the very end so it doesn't move anywhere. And from there, you can go ahead and carry it outside. I went ahead and placed a couple of soft horses outside, making it much easier on me to actually clean and take off the hardware. This is where that magnetic extender drill bit actually comes into play because of the fact that it makes it much easier to take off the hardware at this point. And now you're ready to clean. I took that bucket and poured about a gallon of water in it and about a fourth of a cup of the TSP. Now this TSP is a very heavy duty cleaner, so make sure at this point in time, you're wearing gloves when you're doing this. Once I washed both sides, I took a towel and just quickly wiped off the surface. This dries actually fairly quickly. And once the surface is fully dry, you can go ahead and do your taping on your edges. Now, I'm pretty precise on exactly where I want my tape to go because I want a nice finished edge for that paint because I'm spraying it everywhere and it's going to get in everywhere once I start spraying. I set up a couple boxes in which I don't care about, and I'm ready to get this paint job going. I give my paint a quick extra stir just to make sure nothing is settled and everything is fully mixed together. And from there, I go ahead and pour it into the container for the sprayer, and uh, you are ready to rock and roll. And of course, you can't forget to put on your nice little safety mask, especially if you are spraying inside. You want to make sure you have a well-ventilated safety mask. I'm doing a quick little test just to make sure it's spraying correctly. And then I go ahead and take the door and place it into position. So let's get this party going. I'm spraying the hinge side of the door first because of the fact that this door swings inside of my house. So you will see the hinge side. If it was swinging outside, then you would be able to see the knob side and you'd have to spray that side. At this point in time, you're just trying to make sure you give a nice, steady, even coat over the entire door surface. At this point in time, I'm just trying to saturate the area. I'm not trying to spray too much because if I do, then it potentially might run. And that's the last thing I want at this point. 
Although with this additive, it is very nice the fact that it removes a brush or roller marks or just levels out evenly if you're using a sprayer. Make sure you do a quick once over the entire thing and look and make sure you are not missing any spots. Once it's done, go ahead and set it down and let it dry. And definitely try and get a second pair of hands because it makes it a lot easier on you. Go ahead and let it dry overnight or go ahead and just wait a few hours and make sure it's dry to the touch prior to moving it. One portion of work that I didn't videotape is actually applying that fist queen to the back of the door, which is an important step because of the fact that if I didn't, there would be paint all over that back door. Then go ahead and screw in your door. I'm screwing in all these screws at the same time, but keeping them loose. And once I have them all in place, I go back and then screw them tight. And as you can see, this was a bit of a late night project because of the fact that I had to reinstall this door eventually at night and it took a little while to dry. So just keep that in mind. And who doesn't love to see a little before and after? So obviously the before and the after. Woo! Now look at that curbside appeal. That is one beautiful red sexy beast. Oh yes. Red room. Red room. And there you have it, episode number seven of BOAT done. Good to go. I can't believe it, but in all reality, that little red door has added a lot more curbside appeal to my house, and it was just that easy. Thank you for watching. Please like this video. Please subscribe to this channel, and please let me know what you'd like me to do in my next video. I might do it. In any case, thank you for your time, and catch you next time. Well, look at this little red son of a bitch. Oh my gosh, come on. Touch up.